So welcome again, dear participants. This is the last session of today. The topic is connecting the levels and follow-up activities. Your moderators will be Castellus Colo and I. And um, also on the stage, you see, are the moderators of the foregoing three sessions. Um, we structured this session into four parts. In the first part, um, Castellus and I will provide our own findings and recognitions from sessions one to three. In the second part, we will have the moderators on stage to ask them about their session highlights. Afterwards, we will take some of your questions from, from the chat. So you are free to um, give some more questions if you like into the chat and um, we will pick some of them. And finally, of course, um, there is a short outlook concerning the uh, follow-up activities. Well, let me start with the questions of today's event. The symposium um, should touch up on the questions on the future of higher education. What is a necessary answer to COVID-19 and what goes beyond? Which developments are accelerated, which are delayed by the pandemic and which may even change direction? So do we have answers now? Do we have answers to these questions? I mean, yes, at least we have some. One answer which has the quality to, to cover everything was given by Daniel Schmelzer, who in session two said, the system is shifting from knowledge to qualification. Yeah, that's it. So we can stop here, I think. Or another statement I have to quote is from Hannes Schwaderer. Hannes Schwaderer said, so let me take my notes. Um, oh, it's very easy. Teachers are too slow. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. I am, uh, I am a university teacher. Hannes, uh, if you are still online, we have to talk. Um, okay, okay, Hannes. Um, you made it much more polite. Um, however, the bad news is you are right. You are right. Teachers are too slow, too slow compared to the development of new technologies. Well, once again, I could stop here. Um, however, I'm academic and um, I like to make it a little bit more elaborated. To go deeper into the session results, I'd like to describe my overall impression in a simplified model, in a simplified model of the past of higher education systems compared to the future higher education systems. From the past, we know a clear division of stakeholders roles in the qualification of academic experts. It's the beginning of, um, of a linear sequence about qualification steps are, as I see it, society needs and economic demands for expert knowledge. The governments are called up on to create a framework for qualification. From this framework, laws, rules, regulations are derived. Support programs and funding lines are also designed. The higher education institutions are legitimized and equipped. The institutions themselves design study programs within the scope of their mandate and possibilities. The students take these offers. And at the end of the linear chain, the students turn to the companies with their acquired qualifications. This system is what we knew and what we know and what works. But it is clear that the stakeholders act independently. Um, and this is something which have to be changed. 
in the post-corona future, the system will no longer be determined by linear sequence. Governments are responsible for creating a framework, but no longer so much for designing appropriate institutions. Conditions for knowledge platforms will become more important. We heard that today uh, from almost every speaker. Free access to knowledge, the provision of knowledge, the didactic processing of knowledge. Universities do not necessarily have to provide these services for the society. Ed tech companies and content providers will take more and more of these topics. Educational institutions are linked to each other with all other stakeholders. They support students in accessing knowledge. They form entire degrees. Maybe, maybe they have to build up micro-credentials. Companies are involved in the lifelong qualification of students or employees from their perspective. They are in dialogue with the institutions and agree transfer projects um, with them. In these transfer projects, the students learn, uh, but at the same time, they cooperate um, with the companies and um, they, um, they work on the goals of the companies. So to describe this picture in, in more detail, uh, I give some remarks to our sessions um, according to the pers perspective of the traditional four important uh, higher education stakeholders. These stakeholders are, once again, the students, the corporations or employers, the higher education institutions and the governments. For the students, future higher education systems should provide opportunities for, we heard that, lifelong learning, personalized learning, informal learning, flexibility, and um, within the future study programs, or even better, um, learning nuggets um, are the most um, are, are very uh, are very important. And the most important competencies are um, digital literacy, some kind of digital literacy, personality. We got that from the first session. Um, and also mentioned, um, and for my understanding from crucial importance, is entrepreneurial thinking. Not mentioned, that was surprisingly for me, not mentioned, but we should consider, consider that students today and after COVID-19, more than ever, will love international mobility. Um, and um, another important topic, not discussed today, sustainability. The Friday for Future generation is on its way into the universities. It is clearly perceptible that the next generation will insist on education for sustainable development. Actually, we knew all these students' interests before Corona, but today, we believe it. Well, what's about the stakeholder group employers? The perspective of the employers is similar to the students' perspective. Companies need talents with digital literacy competencies, with strong personal skills, and they have to promote continuing education. However, the focus is much more on technical qualifications. Students learn for life, employers hire project managers and skilled specialists. The war of talents is about data science, artificial intelligence, data mining, big data, internet of things, coding, and other digital qualifications. Um, that, was what, that, that was very clear pointed out by, by, um, by our experts from, from the companies. That takes me to the perspective of the institutions. 
the mission of the institutions is the scientific education of the students and their qualification for professional challenges. The institutions are committed to students and companies. Today we learned about some future challenges challenges of the institutions. Uh, for example, um, they have to employ coaches instead of teachers. Um, yeah, one thing more which I have to think about. I, I mentioned I'm a teacher, so um, I, I have to change myself into a coach. I, I know that. And um, another thing which Institutions, institutions should change is um, they should break their long curricula into smaller units, into some kind of micro credentials. Um, to fit the students' demand, it would be useful, it gives them the opportunity to attend individual courses within different universities, not just in one to build their own path based on their interest. That might be transversal to structured university courses. All this stuff reminds me, it reminds me at some past Bologna discussions about transparency, comparability, portability, recognition of learning outcomes of individuals. Up to now, a trustworthy automatic system of mutual recognition is still missing. How can and should governments accompany the institutions, the students and the corporations? Some approaches among others are establish open access knowledge databases, support give support for content development and infrastructure, infrastructure, technical infrastructure for delivery, for delivering of the content. Another approach is enhancing national or even better international credit frameworks, improve the European ECTS and other credit systems. Governments have to implement some kind of trustworthy stock exchanges for credit points. Why not? Implement lifelong learning accounts. That is not a new idea. It is running quite well in some Asian countries. With all, yeah, yeah, all of this could be done by the governments and um, yeah, so far some approaches for new government challenges and the new role of all traditional um, stakeholders. At the end of, of my um, summary, I'd like to stress that many experts like our speakers know very well which changes in the higher education are on its way and which ones make sense. However, how can change management be done? Before Corona, my personal assessment was that Changings and new systems of this scale require long-term planning, policy development, good governance, and substantial ongoing resources. Today, after 10 months of rapid change, and after our event of this day, um, it seems that systems are on its way. Everything follows agile methods. Instead of long-term planning, some edutech startups and the big digital platform providers are just working on the implementation of new higher education systems. Um, to quote a dear Kleine from Microsoft, who said today, big tech is entering higher education. And last not least, what does that mean in my picture from the beginning? The linear sequence of the stakeholders is dissolved. Stakeholders are in exchange via digital services, platforms and processes. The digitalization is not just about teaching methods. 
it will transform the linear sequence into a hybrid common system. In this system, students can organize their individual lifelong learning path in permanently and parallel connection to various higher education institutions and corporations. So thank you. That's my impression from today. And uh, Kassel, yeah, thank you. would you like to supplement your yes. insights? Um, I, uh, thank you for this uh, great uh, summary. I think there's an echo. Maybe the others uh, mute um, their microphone. So it's, um, I think it's good now. Uh, um, yeah, thank you for this this great summary. I would I would uh, like to emphasize um, more the open questions. We, we got indeed uh, um, uh, many answers uh, to some of the questions we started into this symposium, but there are still many questions looming. Um, I noted basically four questions. Um, there is change. And as we have heard, it's driven by manifold forces. It's not just technology. Students change, the knowledge producers, the skills instructors, the teachers change, employers change, and uh, change their requirements. Um, but we shouldn't overlook also society at large. Um, um, we do, after all, not just educate for specific business tasks. Um, we have, a, as educators, a societal role, um, and that was emphasized several times. Um, and society at large also changes and um, um, has, has specific requirements. So what's the interplay of all these uh, different uh, forces at work? Uh, what I also took from the discussions um, is that incumbent institutions are not really prepared and, and not set up for dynamic change. Um, so um, how do we change framework conditions? How do we set up incentives? Or should we do so? Shouldn't we just leave them as monolithic as they are? Um, I think this is an important question that came up. Um, and um, what we also learned that in parallel, new players, tap into the opportunities not covered by the incumbents and they move fast. But where exactly are they moving to and who guides them, who directs them um, is another important question. And this um, um, uh, brings me to the last, the fourth question I noted that is still open in my um, um, uh, view. Um, I think um, this change is needed and it could be beneficial, but we should change, not just let happen. So there is a normative element in it. Um, and um, uh, we got some ideas by the symposium, but um, I think we need to uh, discuss on that in more detail. And this brings me to two missing uh, points. Um, uh, you mentioned also some aspects that were not mentioned, uh, Klaus. Um, there's another one, um, after all, higher education, tertiary education, um, takes students by the hand and uh, guides them to professionalism. Um, uh, but um, they, these students, they come with some equipment from primary and secondary um, education. So um, we, uh, we cannot move ahead independently. We have to integrate in this discussion also educators from K-12 K education. Uh, otherwise, um, we cannot tap and match um, um, the, the, the qualifications and um, um, the um, prerequisites that students bring. And um, um, last but not least, there was a missing um, uh, group of key players in this discussion that um, um, we had not among in the panels. Politics, political actors, after all, they um, decide for framework conditions, they have a major stake in setting up in incentives um, to guide change towards the desired. And um, this, I think, paves the way for future discussions. And now I hand over to our moderators to ask them for their key 
questions they take away from this session. So not the answers that were um, um, brilliantly summarized by you, Klaus, more what are our to-dos? What are um, potential follow-up activities um, among these um, um, experts that we invited and probably additional ones? I start with Merle, please. What's your takeaway? Yes, thank you. In, in session one, uh, I think it was very interesting that the learning is in the center again because this shift from teaching to learning as well is not a very new thing. It's almost 20 years old, but now I think maybe because of COVID-19, it's um, um, now there again, because um, they said the learner must be in the center. And the question is how students learn and the focus is on the didactics. And now because of um, COVID-19, we, um, have to switch to online learning and then the situation is there again. How can we teach or how can we coach them? How can we get them in involved and engaged? And I think now this whole topic is there again. I think this was very, very interesting for me. But the question is still how, as I asked uh, um, Beate, yeah. So more focus on didactics again, and how can we get them engaged, but how can we get them understand that it is imp it's important to take over this responsibility to learn? Thank you, Merle. Now to the institutional level, Reimer, you represent an institution yourself as CEO of, of uh, mm -hmm. Macromedia. Uh, yes. You are one um, uh, of the the players in this arena. So what's your takeaway? What are the questions you take from this discussion? Well, uh, first of all, what I what I liked uh, is that uh, private uh, institutions are very well positioned uh, for the challenges ahead. Uh, I think that was a, a key, key conclusion, um, although uh, we uh, must not become complacent uh, in this market. And, and one of the there are actually two questions from the discussions arose. Uh, uh, first, uh, we, there was a talk, uh, the, the, there was an, the, the overarching questions, who are the new players? And uh, I mean, while, we, while there, there is an agreement that it's obviously not big tech, uh, at least for now, um, the question is, who are, who are really the emerging players in this market? Who are the disruptors uh, for the moment? It's not really clear. I mean, so universities seem to be seem, seem still to play a role in the future, um, but but we know from the past that that, that, that the, the ed, ed tech market is is very dynamic, and and there will be there will be new players uh, entering the market. And so, but the, the, as I said, the question is, is who who in the end will be the competitor, the true competitor uh, mm -hmm. for for private universities or for universities in general? If at all, if at all. So, um, and the other question I, I asked myself because there was a lot of talk about uh, change in teaching and and uh, the, the future skills. Um, what do we do if the students, or how do we go about this change with the students? If the stu whether the students are ready or not uh, for this change? I mean, we know the critical skills, but what happens if the students disagree and they? rather uh, stick to their old habits um, and and what does it mean for us, uh, for the university, for the future, for the companies? Um, I think that's a critical role, that's a critical question. Um, how does it, uh, how do we disseminate this to, to the students and how do we uh, tell the students that they need to change? Mm -hmm. Th thank you, Rama. Now, um, we also um, learned um, that um, European cooperation, a, a global perspective, also beyond Europe, is very important to understand the dynamics. And I see here also uh, questions um, uh, popping up um, um, in the chat referring to the importance of European projects. What are the questions you take away from the discussion, Tamara? Yeah, thank you, Castellus. Um, I think I can connect to what Reimer just said because he talked about competitors and who are they. I think the um, 
important uh, thing I take away is the topic of cooperation to design flexible curricula together with other universities or maybe also other companies. So we just don't know who this might be. But the question for me is, how do we do that? How we how can we design flexible curricula together with other players and how can they look like like micro credentials like Klaus also said and all this uh, different skills part-time full-time and all that um, topic I think that's for me something that I take away and that uh, is really interesting and also leaves behind lots of questions because it also um, the other part that um, it's also interesting for me is the question of accreditation, like uh, the accreditation system is quite strict and it's not that fast. Like if we um, have an accreditation for a curriculum, we cannot change it as we like. Um, so also how can this change? And maybe there we need to talk with politics, like you said, Castellos. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tamara. Um... It, it would would have been great to have uh, some of the speakers also on stage. Now there's a question concerning the role of Europe, European education, the European education um, system. Um, this is maybe something you can also reflect on, uh, Tamara, um, or the, the other colleagues here uh, on stage. Is there a specific role for um, 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 a cooperation on the European level to cope with these challenges, or is it um, more a national education systems um, 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 task um, to move ahead and to set um, the uh, framework conditions? Because after all, everything that we heard today is happening fast. And we know that European um, uh, discussion processes, they take decades. Um, um, Bologna was mentioned. How long did it take until Bologna was really rolled out and um, arrived in European um, uh, education institutions? I fear that these discussion processes are too slow. Um, the motto of our uh, symposium was educa Higher Education 2030. So this is just 10 years ahead. And what I have learned from today change will be so fast that um, 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 what we teach, the institutions that are involved in teachings and the systems will have changed by the time. Is, is, um, let, let me see if there are some more questions from the, from the audience. I think some of the questions, they, 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 they discuss among themselves. They don't need us any, <laughs> anymore. Yeah, but Castellos, may I, may I, I add something? I hand over to you, Klaus. Yeah, I, I would like to add something to the last question, to the, to the very, um, very important question. Uh, do we need more cooperation within the EU? And we know, we know the initiative from France that, uh, that we have new European universities. And, and the idea behind this new uni European universities is more a mindset thing than an organizational thing. And if, if we want to give an answer to, uh, to, the, to the question, uh, do we need more cooperation? First of all, we have to think about in, in what specific um, task should we cooperate? It is not just about cooperation um, in everything. And um, that leads us to the question, what is the task of the universities in the future, once again, and what is a university? And uh, a university has a lot of tasks. And one new task we learned today, we knew it before, is we have to um, build up a technical infrastructure, which is compatible to the big tech companies. And um, in, this, in this part of the university needed infrastructure, there we need cooperation. There's no university in, in Europe which can do that by its own. Um, we need cooperation for building up a technical infrastructure and services. And if we need um, cooperation in in building up new curricula, um, I'm, I'm in doubt. 
Um, I'm, I'm quite sure we, we need, we need uh, the infrastructure, but everything which is driven and implemented on the new infrastructure can be done by small startups, can be done by teachers, can be done by small universities, by institutions, and so on. So that is, um, was important for me to add. Thank you. Thank you, Klaus. Before you, you will tell us um, what will follow, and how we're going to um, uh, keep with the momentum of um, what um, we started today. Let me ask our moderators, is, is there something you want to add, something um, you take from the audience? I think there are no further questions. There's a discussion going on on the role of Europe, and I would fully agree um, um, that we need... Um, um, a supernatural, a transnational cooperation, um, national ed systems of education are outdated. We need this international, this global view, probably also going beyond Europe, or most um, certainly. Raima, do you want to add something? Um, I, I, I've, yeah, I've seen you moving. <laughs> you know, that's my bouncing chair. Um, <laughs> Now, I think one thing that is that that, that uh, we implicitly touched today was is that the, the notion of um, of, a, of of content uh, of free content has to be also addressed in a way. So, so when we talk about what is the what is the role of a, of a of a university and what is the role of a professor and a teacher, and we say they are more the coach, they are more the one who deliver the the the, the um, uh, the 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 capabilities uh, rather than the skills. Um, uh, to me, what what is also um, attached to this is that co content itself is essentially free, and finding content and and acquire acquiring knowledge is something young people do not need uh, universities for anymore. So. So, so that 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 is an important change uh, that is happening, and the more content aggregators and and companies like uh, Coursera or LinkedIn Education uh, make this available, uh, the more this will also dawn upon the, our younger students, um, our young people, the the digital generation that is uh, is uh, entering the job markets, and and also the ones that are in school now. So. That is something going forward that I think it's also worth exploiting um, because it brings up a whole a whole range of other uh, questions: the importance of a curricula, the emphasis um, of uh, the the, um, the 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 didactics and all that all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Raima. We have to watch the time, um, um, but as it's the last session, uh, <laughs> over time is, is acceptable, uh, acceptable. I thank all the moderators for keeping the time and um, um, for the experts um, um, uh, sharing their insights with us. Uh, it was a great experience. I think this format worked quite well. And now I hand over to Klaus, um, uh, who will tell us um, what will be next and what we're going to make out of all these insights. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. F first of all, I, I have to correct you. This is, this is not the last session. This is the last session of today. Um, <laughs> we have an outlook to, an, to, another, to another event. And uh, yeah, that is one thing we, we plan, of course. We, we want to go on with, with this kind of um, discussion. Um, as I see it, it was... Um, an, an interesting day for all of us and the ongoing chat room discussion is, is one more proof for that. So we have to organize um, some more of, of these um, interesting uh, groups and um, invite some more people. Castellus, you mentioned the, the politicians were not <laughs> on stage today. Um, that is one, one, one group we have to focus on at the next time. Um, but um, I, I don't want um, to um, to define right now what are the the agenda for the next e event will be. Um, that should de should depend on our evaluation of of this um, first symposium, and um, this first um, after this first symposium, all of you, all of you, um, dear participants, will get. A, 
uh, protocol, um, which is um, more or less a management summary of this. We will work that out within the next uh, weeks. And um, also you will, you will get from us um, a save the date for a spring 2021 event. Um, yeah, yeah, that is the next step. Of course, we go on with the discussion. And uh, uh, let me say once again, thank you for all of, for all the interesting contributions to this. Um, thank you for the for attending the conference. And um, now I think it's it's time to close the event. Castellos, yes. it is thank, your honor. Yeah, thank you so much on behalf also of the university board, on behalf of all the hosts. It was a great experience. And please reach out to us. Uh, we keep on discussing and um, uh, let's all be part of it and shape um, uh, higher education 2030. Take care, stay healthy and happy. Good evening and Thank have a good day much. in the US. Yes, yes, bye. <laughs> Thank you so much.